Hein. We've seen from previous lessons the ongoing um, problems caused by unstable slopes. This is uh, a geohazard that we here in, in Britain need to deal with, uh, and it's one that has the potential uh, certainly to cause a great deal of disruption uh, and economic loss. So it's really important that we can um, monitor uh, unstable slopes and be able to um, determine when and where they're likely to fail. Now, there's a number of different methods um, we can use for this. What I want to do in this lesson is go through some of these just to explain how they work. Okay, let's go. The first of these is using remote sensing. Satellite or aerial photos uh, can show changes over time, um, particularly if they're taken at a, at a regular uh, intervals. Um, but they can reveal uh, changes that may not be immediately obvious from the ground. What's interesting is this technology is constantly developing. We now see uh, the ability of satellites uh, to scan um, the Earth's surface to look for alterations uh, in altitude. So we can uh, identify um, fairly early on if part of a slope is moving. It's a remarkable leap in technology. It's used as well for monitoring earthquakes uh, and the, the stress building up um, in seismically active areas. But it does have applications as well um, for monitoring landslides. It is possible uh, to survey this movement uh, from the ground as well. This technology perhaps is starting to be superseded now. This is what's called uh, EDM, or electronic distance measuring. You may have seen machines like this being used uh, by surveyors, for example, on building sites. The machines that are mounted on a tripod here are lasers. The laser will measure extremely accurately between uh, the distance between two places. So if you have um, a fixed base station and reflectors mounted on uh, different parts of your potential uh, mass movement, you can accurately measure the distance between these two places uh, and look for change over time. It's a very accurate system, but one that uh, perhaps is a bit more labor intensive and a little bit more time consuming to process the data than other um, sort of later iterations, I suppose, of this technology. More about that a bit later on. We can, of course, uh, measure the, uh, the tilt or the inclination of a slope, again, looking for changes. This is uh, a whole series of different types of tilt meters that can get installed on the side of a slope. We use a similar technology, for example, on volcanoes uh, to look for any uh, inflation or, or deflation of uh, uh, volcanic slopes. These machines, though, measure changes in angle, uh, similar type of thing to a spirit level. Uh, and these machines then can uh, send their data back to uh, a monitoring station. You can see in the photo on the bottom left there, um, a solar panel to power it, uh, and an aerial um, to be able to send the, the data back. Creep meters or strain meters, I suppose, have some similarities to tilt meters. But here we're looking for uh, any type of deformation across a discontinuity. Um, they're fixed to the bedrock. They um, span the gap between uh, across discontinuities. Uh, and if there's a change across there, change in the stress uh, or a change in the, um, the gap across that discontinuity, that will be recorded and sent back to a monitoring station.
We've talked uh, at some length about the importance of water. Water, and particularly water pressure, is crucial in determining the risk posed by a mass movement. Um, it is possible to um, measure the water uh, table, the depth of the water table down a borehole, um, and also using this machine called the piezometer at the bottom of a borehole, measure any changes in water pressure. Because really it's the water pressure, which, which is a, um, a result, I suppose, of the changing water table. But it's that water pressure that can be the trigger of a mass movement. If we can monitor this, if we can monitor the changes of this, it's possible to predict the likelihood of a mass movement. With any movement uh, in a slope, it's going to generate some seismic activity, but on a very, very small scale. These will be earthquakes that are too small to feel, but we can measure them. These um, small earthquakes, and particularly the frequency of these earthquakes, will give an indication that a slope is, is starting to move, that a slope is starting to fail. So like the uh, piezometer that we talked about previously, this might allow us to actually predict a movement rather than um, just uh, record when one has started. Perhaps the biggest change in technology that there's been to monitoring mass movements is the development of LIDAR. This is uh, a laser scanning of a slope. Uh, this can be done um, from um, a fixed base station, for example, in a mine. Uh, you might have um, a fixed uh, recorder, it's constantly scanning a, um, mine uh, faces, looking for changes. Uh, it can be done from uh, a vehicle or a drone even. Um, and what it'll do is it gives uh, a 3D um, representation of um, a ground surface, so a slope or a mine or whatever really you're scanning. This will record a huge amount of data um, to give a, a full picture of the area you're scanning and it can then be superimposed over previous scans of the same features and changes can be highlighted very, very quickly and very, very accurately. This really is the sort of the game changer, uh, I think, in terms of monitoring slopes. Watch the uh, associated video uh, to see uh, how this is actually um, used in practice. So, to conclude, it is possible using a wide range of different techniques to monitor for mass movements. These are predictable hazards. There are some other um, bits of geology that would come into it as well. For example, mapping, knowing what the geology is uh, of slopes, knowing, identifying the, the rocks that are liable to fail, and particularly in the areas where any failure would be, um, would cause disruption. Perhaps uh, there's a lot of work, for example, being done on um, railway cuttings following a, a, a train crash in 2020 um, which killed three people where a landslide onto tracks wasn't detected um, and a train hit that landslide at high speed and derailed. So it, it's essential work um, that geologists do to try and understand what's happening with mass movement. Which of these techniques applies or can be applied depends on uh, the nature of the hazard, uh, the budget, um, but it could even be a combination of these factors uh, or these techniques that gets used uh, depending on the particular circumstances of the hazard. Of course, monitoring on its own isn't enough to protect um, places from mass movement. We also need to be able to stabilise slopes. 
the discussion of that is, is for another lesson. I'll see you then.